Okie dokie, let's see what we got going on here. All right, I think we're okay, somewhat. I think I'm out of the way. If not, I'll just move it over a little bit. I should be all right. My head shouldn't be too much in the way. Okay. Hello, how are you, RV? Good to see you. Well, today you get to see my face. I got an impressive uh, color display here for paint. Thalo blue and tight. Well, it's not really titanium white, but it will be the substitute for today. All right, and we're gonna get right on to it. Okay, I'm just gathering my little bearings here. I did this painting earlier in black and white. This is one of these instances where <clears throat> I'm not really doing anything much. So, why not go live, right? Okay, anyway. It would be a monochrome painting, just a series of different hues of blue. I've only put, this is a 15 and a half by 15 inch. Um, it's actually foam board. I sprayed, uh, I glued um, roll canvas onto some foam board, take some spray adhesive, glue it on there. And there you go. I did all of this within you know, a few hours. Then I just painted it black, okay. I have, as you can tell by the reflection, I got vegetable glycerin on it, so it's pretty much ready to go. I'm using a transparent color. Any color that's dark, and when you put it on a black background, as you will soon see, thalo blue, all right. And you put it on here, it will still appear black. Now, the glycerin will keep this blue rather wet for quite some time depending on the temperature of your room. I don't really need too much thalo blue. Thalo blue is a very strong color. And since I'm, diff I'm, I'm dealing with different variances of shade and tones and whatnot, as long as I cover the upper half, you know, everything will be cool. And you'll, you'll see. Get a pretty dynamic sky this way. It's simple as pie to do this. All right. Pardon the back of my head, you'll be seeing that often. I didn't really share this out. If people see the notification, they'll stumble in here. In a perfect world. All right. Let's take a small fan brush. Okay. Now you see me looking over to my left shoulder, which might be to your right, but I got a 40 inch screen I'm looking at there. Um, there's a lag when I look at it with my monitor, um, my tablet. All right, um, as you can see with, the, with you know, uh, let's go this way there. Only the tip of the brush, okay, got paint on it. Watch what happens. Oh, I guess I'll mess around with it this way. I'll just aim it in a circular motion this way. Come up and then I'll come down. Just like that. All right. Okay. Take a small blender. And I guess I wanted to kind of wisp and fade out. Upside down. I'll fade it out this way. There's a method to my madness you'll see in a second or two. But as you see, the white paint takes on the properties of takes the properties of that dark color. Okay. And I'll wisp lightly some kind of 
cloud kind of wispy shapes like this just kind of now I'm wiping my brush off with every pass I'll start to kind of fade some of this in you're using the blue to kind of fade it in a little bit I want to keep a little bit of the white it's kind of a game okay all right something like that let's take I'll take um, I'll take the flat brush and I'm gonna start to just do cross marks just to fade some of this outside blue now as you kind of crisscross and start blending and fading it's gonna blend more and more okay into that darkness and that's fine that's kind of what I want you'll see why in a second Now, if my head is in the way, I'll find, I'll see and I'll adjust accordingly if it's in the way. I didn't clean off my brush. Just getting some more white. We're going to repeat that process. Oh, uh, right about here. Right here. Come in here and just repeat the process. Circular motion. I'm just twirling the brush any type of old way. Getting some more white. Just like that. Okay. I'll clean the brush off this time. Hello, Marilyn. How are you? Share away. It's all right. It's all good if you want to share it. Um, that's fine if you would like to. It's all right. I just I just didn't do it. Okay, and we're gonna do the same process. Kind of wisp. Just like that, just wave it around. Keep playing with it. Kind of like that intensity on the bottom. I'll kind of make the tops disappear a little bit. Just like that, just whip it around. I'm wiping off my brush often. Basically, I want some of this, like I said, I'll get it sharper on the bottom edge and wisp away the back end. Basically what I'm doing. And then as I come up here, I'll kind of get some cute little patterns going. Don't necessarily want to get rid of the intensity of the white. Just a little bit here and there. Like I say, it's kind of a gentle little dance, a little game you're doing. I don't want to kill all of that bright white. And the more you blend, the more it, it kind of fades into that, that blue. Okay. On the back end here, you can go a little bit stronger. I can press a little bit more just to bring it into that blue. But I can also go in reverse and bring that blue into the cloud also. I'm just wiping off the residual stuff off the brush. I'll start smoothing things out, which is just me blending. And once again, I'll get the larger brush and just X strokes. It's just more blending. It's blending all that blue into that white. I can come in here and do a little love in here too. Okay. And once again, repeat the same process. Here's my other brush. Then we're just going to keep on doing it. I'm really kind of concentrating on keeping the white white bring some of that down there come out here a little bit just like that
I'll keep doing the same process. Very, very simple way to get tones and values going. I'm looking, I do have a smaller brush because I probably need to wash this one. I have different varieties of these mop brushes. And you know, eventually you, you just got to get used to um, working with all of them. Some I, I'm a little more comfortable with than others, you know, but it would be good for you to kind of work with all of them. This one here, obviously different shape, a little larger, but it's still got that little peak and that's what you kind of concentrate on. Really, it's that little peak. And once again, we'll kind of play with that back end just a little bit there. No matter what, I'll keep messing with the back end, blur that back end out a little. Yep, you guys can see it. All right. Come out here with it. I'm not using all of this brush like you would think I'm using. I'm not. Okay. But it is a wider brush. I'll come out here. And because it's a wider brush, now I can kind of play with that back end there. It's a wider brush I can just kind of blend it all out as you can see I'm getting all sorts of tones and tints going on having a little fun I'll kind of pat these a little bit just like that now I don't have to use the other brush because this one's wider so if I want to tone stuff down basically I just add a little pressure I ain't going to circle motion or twisting motion, something like that. But as long as you can start to see the little ring, the rims of clouds, you know, that type of deal. All right, we're gonna do it again. One more. Yeah, I think I can get away with one more. And we'll play with it. Oh, right up around here like this. And my most important thing really is just to get that nice round of white going. It's just aiming the brightness down on the bottom there. Just like that. Now I just happen to go in a semicircular motion with the pattern of the clouds. You can go in any pattern you really want. It can be a Z pattern, whatever pattern that you know you fancy. Okay. Sure, I'm kind of out of the way a little bit there. And once again, play around the back end there. Kind of fluff it around. I don't have to stay as long on, on some areas. Not 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 needed. And kind of fluff it around. Play around with it. And I'll kind of twist and bend lightly some of it in the front but basically back here just kind of twist away you want to keep your color localized you can do that also up to you because I'm not disappearing all of that black it won't be necessary I am going to bring some of that color down here into the dark area just to blue it up a little bit okay I'm just carefully looking at things here all right, I'm going to take my brush here and I think I'm done messing around with this. I say stuff that needs to be smoothed out, I'll smooth it out. But it seems to be pretty much okay. We're good. All right, I'm going to clean up this brush real quick. These type of brushes do soak in and hold a lot of water. You may want to squeeze the water out with your hand before you uh, hit it against the rack. <coughs> Hope everybody had an enjoyable Sunday so far. All right, I'll just set this over here.
I prefer doing my next step with a filbert. Um, I'll put it against my chest here, you see the shape of it. Or put it under here. All right, okay. Tip of paint on the corner. Really up to you where you wanna add your highlights. And I'll just kind of push that highlight on the edge there, just like this. You're gonna you you you're tightening up that the highlights. I'm wiping off my brush, and I'm just going to tap in the inside edge. See this? Tap in the inside edge a little bit. You can kind of coax along the brightness to however you want. You, you can round out clouds this way if you want if you would like. And you just pick and choose where you want your light source. If you want it a little rounder, you just fill it in a little bit. But you still keep the, you know, still keep that trail. Do it a little at a time. Okay, I'll come up around here, add a little bit like that, come down. Wipe off the brush. You do a little at a time. It will start to build. And you'll start to see some of your changes. If my head is in the way, please let me know so I can remove my move my head. I do have a bad habit of doing that. And all I have to do is just adjust myself. So in essence, it's like me doing a little silver linings, but just obviously a little, little wider. I'll come up in here, add some body up here. Wipe off the brush. And I'll just lightly tap the back end there just like that just tap it in because the glycerin is still moving around still wet okay and you know some people depending on their patience if this could be kind of time consuming but if you know what you're doing you you, you be surprised you move right along all right and then I'll just kind of lightly tap I'm trying not to drag don't drag your brush you know the taps will work fine and we're gonna come around on this edge just build this one up here a circular motion there just like that I'll flip the brush around see if I got a little extra there and then we'll come around the back end over here just brighten that up a little bit go right into the tape clean off the brush wipe the paint off the brush and you just kind of lightly tap and you tap your shape in and tapping it, it smooths it out and it blends it in, in more, a little more of a gentle fashion okay so you get a nice gradation of color going through all right that brightness also assists in the layering of the clouds all right. Try your best not to rush it. I don't have to brighten every one of them. I'm cleaning off the brush. Every once in a while, I will clean clean the brush off. It takes a second to dry it. And once again, make sure you dry the water off the brush because glycerin in water, it, it, uh, the water will cut through vegetable glycerin like a hot knife through butter. Be mindful of that. And the more you play around with glycerin, the more you work around, work with the glycerin, you know what it can and cannot do. And your life will be more, your painting life will be a little more manageable. Hello, Nell, how are you? Hey, Jeff Thurston, how are you? Yes, it will change it instantly, yeah. And once again, this could be a mana monochromatic uh, chromatic painting we'll give it a couple touches here we'll have the touches go off the page like that and we'll continue it here just like that just like so I'm just wiping off right now I'm doing a little at a time let's go over here let's kind of and you see it's just a tapping motion there keep the intensity toward the front and a little bit toward the back it depends on how much roundness you want on, uh, in your clouds Okay. 
I'll come up around here like that and you'll know more and more with experience and the more you do it the more comfortable you are with doing it okay and I'm still working only with the tip of the brush I'm not going any further and I'm working with these series of clouds kind of reverse order I'll kind of give it a smile right here because we're gonna round that one off um, we'll kind of continue it on over there when I find myself getting thin with the white paint I just stop and get some more because you really want it on the bottom to get those curves in like that I'll probably kind of loop this one around here like this all right Oh yeah, you're, you're more than welcome now. Yeah, I had to catch myself for, for a second. Now for those of you who see me looking toward my left, I got a 40 inch screen, so that actually helps me um, because vegetable glycerin is extremely reflective and I have a few lights on here to illuminate the board a little more because the board, I'm seeing a bunch of sparkles because of the reflectiveness of the glycerin and I'm just tapping in the color and just really being mindful I'm tapping away the, the back end color as you can see I'm keeping the edge but I'm slowly just tapping in the back end color tapping it into the into the blue I'm working with the uh, transparent color all right. Kind of strengthen up that part right there. Uh, let's let's kind of round that off too. Let's give him a nice one over here, just like this. And we'll we'll just round it off this way, just like that. Wipe off the back end there and kind of mold it over here. I think we'll keep it like that. Get some more paint. This is uh, not exactly titanium white. It's almost as thick and almost as potent, but it is not titanium white. It's um, it is it's chalk chalk paint, Waverly brand chalk paint. Get it right from Walmart. This paint, once it dries, it's like well, you can actually write on it with chalk because it's hard as stone when it when it when it um, dries there we go but as you see your eye goes around in that semi semi-circle fashion but what you what was um, helps this out and gives that illusion is the gradation from your brightest to your your darker tones and yet you got a, a row of dark surrounding these guys and in that darkness you still got values of the phthalo blue all different values so it keeps everything interesting and it moves your yeah no 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 strokes N nope just dab it you can dab it and dab the dab the uh the strokes right out of it so it's a smoother transition and plus dabbing it also assists in your tones and values and in your clouds that's what you're kind of looking for plenty of values and tones and everything which is why you see me doing what I'm doing the little padding here now the glycerin once again is still wet all right so there's a lot of manipulation you can do here so if even if I wanted to smooth that out you just take a small mop brush and gently just circular motion it just it doesn't remove it just smooths out what you've done so if you want a smoother finish you just do one of these it's not you're not gonna kill your tones you're just gonna smooth out the dabs a little bit I want them in there but I'll just do this as an example just kind of smooth out a few then I'm gonna leave it. I'll just leave it alone after that there now as I go further away from the from the uh, outlining I can like maybe pop one right in here like this 
Now remember, I'll I'll keep it at a kind of a rounded thing there. All right. Um, we'll emphasize the bottom a little more, even though it's not really a a um, silver lining or anything like that. But just to give it a little body, and then I'll just tap in once again and tap away the the back end a little bit, blend it right into that that color. The intensity of it is really up to you how far you want this to be, how dark you want it to be, how light you want it to be, really your world, you do what you want, okay? Do what you want. Okay. And if you notice, if you notice, I did not add the highlights on the very first one. <clears throat> so that instantly brings that further back these guys come up further with the wider the little arc okay you got me so you don't really have to you know you don't have to overdo it but everybody you see the pattern now okay the claws have a pattern even though they're, all, they're swirling around they're acting all stormy looking but you got all different values and tones but you still got your shape your eye still leading in that circle even with this stuff back there okay all right let's take i kind of like that i like the way it sets off so i'll leave that be it's no big deal like i said i did an earlier version of something like this um and you'll see it on my wall or you know I did one in black and white it was for a um, March um, art challenge okay let's have a little fun today there's a certain type of trees that I want to do I just don't have the patience right now to really delve into them in that fashion so I will take a very tiny um, fan brush here what I'll do is I'll push this in a little bit I have a touch screen camera so I, I'll bring the focus here there okay now the way this camera um the way i have it set up all right <clears throat> this painting is actually squished in believe it or not because of um see where my van camera number two and camera number one here if i took this one off then i could expand it would be its true form right now it's kind of mashed in because i got the other two cameras going all right okay Let's go back, remember monochrome, all right? So we're gonna go into our thalo, very powerful color. I should have used a smaller brush, but it's okay. I'm using the glass palette today. And I'll mix a little white in that thalo. I have to mix enough of it to do what I would like to do, but it has to be of a certain, a certain tone, a certain uh, level of blue. I think this might do it. I want the trees in there. But I don't want them. Um, I want them in there, but it's a kind of like sneaky. They're in there though, but they're in the background back there. Why am I creating this circular pattern? Because I want to. Actually, it's a different variance on the cloud pattern. Sometimes, you know, I usually do the clouds that kind of swirl, but they're, you know, kind of going across the page. This time, I just decided to go circle. And plus it makes kind of a, like a cloud tunnel so it, it will bring out whatever I want in front even more so it's not kind of an optical illusion per se I'm gonna get it just a tad shade darker just a tad cuz I still want the y'all want you to see the trees but you know you, you, you make you look a little harder but they are in there all right I should have plenty you'll see Okay, and here we go. We'll just get some guys in the back back there. Um, I'll start them right from here.
and they are they will look, look like a forest they'll be in different sizes you're gonna get some heavier foliage down below the tape okay like I say you'll know the trees are there but you're gonna you're gonna be looking but they are there and it's still a different color blue than what you see so I can actually get away with it put some height on these trees put them way put them way up there okay just like that put them in there and it's just a grouping of trees that's all they are they don't have to be super detailed not necessary because they're in the back I gotta still position myself in a way there put some up in there like that gather some more paint a little touch of white there not too much I still want them relatively dark there we go you're still dealing with values even though it's one color okay all right oh let's go over here on the other side just like that kind of put it in there put them in there just like this now when painting trees that are kind of um let's put a giant in there like that give them a few friends I gotta make sure that I'm not in your way kind of sort of just like that okay so we got those doing their thing right there all right like I say obviously your trees are straight vertical but you got them curved clouds all right so automatically you're getting you're establishing depth you find if you follow me aerial perspective and linear perspective at the same time all right Keely how are you greetings how are you how are you how are you okay there's no glycerin on the bottom it was just on the top here okay all right so we'll peel off the tape tape it was just a guide all right I won't need any more of this mess now the thing with glycerin be careful gl um, gl uh, tape is not porous so that glycerin will stay on there just as wet and damp and messy as can be just a little you know a little warning okay this uh bust out with some more phthalo blue because i know i'm going to need it i pre prefer um grumbacher because it, it the thickness of it reminds me of oil paint i used to be an oil painter all right so um yeah you guys can see it from here all right but this is the brand i i use okay all right so let's put a little more on there because remember once again monochromatic painting is just a series of values of this phthalo blue okay family cakes it'd be nice if you know you can email some my direction I like salmon I'm just saying okay let me show you something real fast part in the back of my head I should be able to find my pencil and if I don't oh well all right I found it okay oh yeah we'll do it right around here so we'll get a little waterfall thing going that's about all the sketch young I'm doing today all right okay <laughs> okay we're gonna push up from here what about there ish let's block that in at least really doesn't matter what size brush I use for that I'm just blocking it in let's get a little bit of um, this is a just a larger um, half inch okay okay um, let's just play with a little phthalo blue right now just right out the tube phthalo blue and we'll just put it 
here just right there there is no glycerin um, it's just paint right now so we'll just block it in no biggie block it right in there all right enough of that put it right there okay now this particular brush um i don't know if you can see it here i might not have the light so no the light source isn't right this, uh, this particular brush okay you see the bottom it is it's not thin all right it's got the full of bristles there okay so this is this is a good thing let's take here I'll show you here all right it looks like that all right I'll show it to you here there all right let's just take this remember no glycerin so this paint will dry rather quickly you follow me yeah i know i was watching a little bit of it let's just take it let's take it right from the middle right here give give press and just press straight down like that we'll curve it right here straight down we'll flip the brush around curve it go in straight down we got the middle pretty bright and it's fine don't worry about it just a little touch i don't need much uh, um paint with it just like that just bring it on down just give a guide to where that water is going to be just like that so we got that brightness touching that top end which is fine that's cool that is cool establish your waterfall first Trust me, you'll 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 thank me for it. Something like that. All right. Okay then. That's about it for right now. Just establish your waterfall. I'll put that brush there. We may come back to that. Let's take a little bit of this uh, white. Uh, this is a smaller. Filbert, um, this little tiny guy right there. All right, kind of play around. I'll just kind of tap in some motion lines in there, just particularly on one side, e anyway. It's right there, and I'll kind of just tap in some lines, scumble it. There's no, there's no glycerin on this. This is just dry, wet on dry, and we'll just kind of like that and I'll kind of scumble some of that when I say scumble okay it's like working with dry you're dry brushing all right basically matter of fact let's take a little bit of that blue and we'll put it right in here like that all right so we get that shade going and we'll just come down and you start scumbling some stuff because it's a little darker down here anyway and you just kind of get it Make those nice water, foamy water trail marks. Just scumble that paint down in there. I'm gonna need a little more paint to get that effect. No, no problem. This is how you work with your tones and your shades. If I want a little darker, you just put a little more of that paint in there. You're still working with the same color paint. You're just doing different values. All right, follow me? Good. And we'll put some of that dark stuff in there like that. Scumble it, scumble it. Just like that. Put some of that dark in there. This is wet on dry. All right. That's all. I'm not cleaning the brush. I'm just adding a little tip of white to it. And we'll kind of get some of that. Little, little marks and foams that way. A little tip of white. The more you do this, some people, when you see a te technique and you want to try it out, they get a little worried. You know, like you're going to mess it up or you're really going to 
you're gonna, gonna do major damage to your painting or something like that. Um, acrylic is very forgiving. If you feel messed up, cover it up. It's that simple. Okay. If you feel you destroyed it, cover it. No, no, you know, no one's gonna call the paint police on you. You think you messed up? Paint over it. It's not the end of the world. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's not the end of the world why am I doing the waterfall now well once you put the cliffside in obviously bits of the cliffside is going to jut over the waterfall right so I'm really emphasizing where the light is hitting on this guy right on this side here it trails a little bit but once he gets further down it's not trailing anywhere all right it's just it's just dark some over here just some. so if you think I'm adding too much I'm not and if you feel you pee, you put a high spot somewhere it shouldn't be don't cry about it just cover it up like this see how easy that was you get some dark patches in there you built up some of your white slap some of that dark in there when I say dark I don't necessarily mean black okay Give some variance to your waterfall. Trust me, it looks better from far away. I promise it does. All right. This is where things can get a little interesting now. I'm going to do, um, obviously, the rock face. Okay. There's a few ways I can approach this, um, this rock face and I'm thinking about it right now as I'm, as I'm talking to you let's go with a um, you know what I'm going to do because I want texture um, and many of you have not seen this let's see if you guys can see that you see that golden modeling paste even though I'm working with thick paint all right I'm gonna show you something with this if you guys can't see that here you see it here all right it's made by golden <clears throat> all right but it's modeling paste modeling paste looks like this it's white but it, <clears throat> it but it dries clear okay this is another reason why I bring out the glass palette. So I'll show you this. I want to get a nice, nice chunk of it. All right. Let's put the modeling paste in. And we'll put it right there. Don't matter. You can put paint into that. And what it does, it is modeling paste. All right. You got, a, you got a little window of time. Okay, you put your color of choice in it. All right, we're still working monochrome. And then you just stir it in there. Okay, put it right in there. As you will soon see, it does not change the color. But it does make it pretty thick. And you will get plenty of texture with this stuff. All right. Now, we're going to get the stonework going here. All right, but as you see, it does not. It, this stuff does not turn the paint white. It doesn't make it uh, lighter. What you see that transition is once it starts drying, it's going to go right back to its dark blue. Okay, but you mix it in pretty good like that. All right, I'm gonna take a nice swipe of it. I'll spread it out. Now we're only doing one color and white so it doesn't matter how long how thick the swipe is just like this because we're covering a nice chunk area here all right i'll just take it and i'll just kind of go across like that so we got a nice little roll of paint there all right okay let's hey marilyn 
Jagged Rocks, please. Let's see what we can do for you, Thurston, Jeff. Yep, that's how you would use it, uh, Maryland. Okay, let's go. Man, we'll we'll start with this. Um, we'll come here just like you know the Byros would do his mom, but this time we're gonna kind of. I'm not gonna get rid of all of the blacks, but we're gonna jut some of them rocks right, right into them falls there like that. You see that? And I'll just kind of maneuver and push or whatever. Right now, I'm just starting where the rocks will kind of butt in the way of the of the falls. I kind of like the spray there, so maybe we'll kind of get one cut across there like that, just like that, and then we'll we'll play with a little bit of something there. All right, just like like that. I will, we'll play around in there like this. That's cool. I'm gonna bring it up in there like that. Now we'll start getting once I get all this taken care of. Okay, then I'll start to kind of play around with all sorts of stuff here. Okay, remember monochrome painting, it, there won't be any color but this blue. And so I'll start to there. This is our subject of focus right there. Okay, so let's start to have a little fun. Let's start building stuff. Come on here. Just like that we'll kind of loop some around so we're playing around with the top right now now remember this is besides the base color the base of black all right this is your medium tone stuff okay and I'm shaping any which way for right now once the light source hits this once the light hits this this stuff all right when I use lighter paint then you'll start to see the formations and all of that good stuff let's have just have one kind of come down here like this and i'll just take my knife and slant it down that way just like that so we'll get this one like a flat face here we'll come down and just slant it down like, like this i will take some of this it will join we'll join one like this come across like that and uh, we'll continue its downward course like that So you guys, you guys see what I'm doing here. I'll take it real light, real light. I'll get a granite face going like that with this one. So I'm just taking it in sections. We'll bring some of that right around here. way I'm doing this is that I'm taking my my brush well actually let me do something here oh let me let me do something here before I explain some um what I'm doing here and how I'm doing it let me get that off of there like that good bring it right to the bottom and bring this across as you can see I'm not getting I'm not totally destroying all of my darks keep up keep them in there but I'm not destroying all the darks let me wipe off my brush for a second and uh, let me get a nice clean swipe of the color here uh, that's not enough let's go this way all right so it looks like this okay what I'm doing I say that my palm is the paint surface and you're taking the brush you notice I'm not doing this with it all right you're not baking a cake because when you do it like that, you even inadvertently put weight on the on the, the knife. All right, you stir it like a car. But what I'm doing, all right, is I'm going as flat as I can, I guess, to the surface. And then you gently pull to whatever direction, which makes it break and look like that. So you're letting the, uh, the knife do the work for you. Okay, let's go up here for a second. Let's just kind of play around with it like this and just wipe it around like that let's do another pass remember I do have the modeling paste on here so it's giving me all sorts of fun little textures okay I will do another one right here you're the foreman you tell the knife where to go all right and we'll come around in here like this and we'll 
I'll bring it up this way, like that. Now, as I'm doing this, now the thinner you have that paint laid out, all right, the thinner line you got, the more of a texture you'll get also, okay? We'll take this, we'll cup it here, and we'll come around like this, and I'll just turn it downward like that. See, all sorts of interesting things. Now you got another dark patch here. You see that? Once you get accustomed to how rocks form and what they look like, um, you, you pretty much do whatever the heck you want. I can just have it curve here and just go straight down and just join this, just like that. Just kind of join it there, okay? Now you got a gully in there. See that? See, you can do all sorts of crafty little things. Well, kind of get a nice little there. See, you can join the colors together, put a shape in there, and that's how rocks kind of stick out at you. They recede, they go to the left, go to the right. Okay. No one's talking to me here. Starting to feel self-conscious. Not really, but we'll move to the other side here. Right here. Look at that. And you bring it on in there. <laughs> Alright, let's get some more. Need some more modeling paste. Well, let's play around with this until we run out. Always same pressure on the knife? Not really. I mean, okay, let me show you something over here. Let's do that. Let's do this. You can take it. Now, when you add that pressure like that, okay, it kind of comes off like this. All right. Uh, I guess I can use some of this lighter stuff. It's just an example. So when you start adding, see, it looks like that. Once you start adding pressure, see that? That's what it looks like. Don't do that. Okay, let's go back to our modeling base. Let's put this away. Now, I am uh, uh, an instructor. I know it looks like I just ruined that, but I didn't. Uh, would I need this much? Probably not. I'll cut some of this back. But you know what? Who knows? I'll work with it. Um, we'll put it right here again. Let's get some that nice phthalo blue there. And we'll mix it right in there. Mix it right in there and smooth it right out. Now, as I'm talking to you and I'm doing the rock face. Okay. Once you add the um, thinner paint to it or regular um, paint to it the patterns are already there it's going to take what it needs as Mr. Ross would say and give you the rest okay now I usually manhandle these which is why I use a metal knife I do manhandle them I, I bend them twist them you know Miss Gilbert how are you I see you, Miss Gilbert. Yes, Jeff. I'll show you an example of it, as a matter of fact. I'll get a nice little thin swipe. It looks like that. Okay. All right. Okay, Jeff. Uh, we'll go here. All right. I hold it this way. 
And what you want to do once again, you lay the brush as flat as you can against the surface. Like that. Just lay it flat. And you'll see the mark there. Just lay it flat, very lightly, and you just pull. Pull whatever direction you want you want. And you see how it breaks? Okay. You see that breaking? Okay. Let's do one here. Let's go here. Let's go out. And you just kind of curve it around. Bring some of that around here like this. Come on in here like that. Don't get rid of all your black. All right. I'm living the dream, Jessica. I'm living the dream. That's what I'm doing. Okay, let's get, um, actually, let's go upside down. We'll get one here. I'll just wiggle it around, wiggle it around. We're just going that direction. We'll come over here like that. I still got a little bit left, so let's join that. Let's go this way. Let's go straight up like that. Take some, go straight up. I got some flipped on that little side with one of those numbers. Now, I'm very comfortable doing what I'm doing with the knife. So I'm, I'm going in all sorts of crazy directions and doing all sorts of weird things. Let's go down this way. Look at the way that breaks. Okay. See all of that? Don't try to correct it. Let it happen, Captain. These are, it's, they're accidental, really. You're guiding where it's going, but it's accidental. Can I repeat this process? I can repeat the technique. I can repeat the direction. Will, will it give me the same look? No, it will not. They're accidental strokes. Okay, accidentals. So, what happens, happens, basically. Uh, let's pop a, let's jet that rock out right about there, like that. When you put the rocks in front of, that's cool, just like that. When you put it in front of the waterfall, obviously it brings the waterfall back on both sides. Okay, all right. I like, I like the way that looks, so let's bring that downward. Like this, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Continue it, bring it down, bring it down, just like that. I've carved, um, playing around with the knife, you know, I've carved faces in these things. You know, I've done all sorts of silly, silly stuff. You're welcome, Keely. Thank you. Like I say, I'm, I'm bringing these in just various directions. I'm going opposite. But remember, you will get a totally different look if this was done with glycerin on here. All right. Remember, I'm doing um, wet on 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 dry. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to starting to harden up here, and you got all sorts of. You should be able to see it. You see the texture. Okay. Even on the flat part, still texture. And I'll show you an example of that. Okay. We'll probably still use the thick stuff. Um, I think we're pretty much good here with all of this. I got some craziness going on here. Flatten it out. Let's get a, let's get a something here. Um, let's make pretend there's a part of something there. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good in the hood. We're all right. All right. We're good. I don't usually wipe off the knife. I usually don't. All right. We'll be returning back to this guy. Um, as a matter of fact, let's, let's scrape up the rest of this stuff. It's starting to dry. Okay. This should be enough, really. Okay, so we have that color. Now we got our dark foundation, which is the black. Now we've mixed our phthalo blue with, with the modeling paste. Oh, remember I told you once it dries, it dries clear and it brings that color back. Look how dark it is. All right. So as it dries, it goes right back to its original color. Okay, so we got black. Now we got our, our more or less our medium color, medium uh, tone. Okay, let's get some of this white, just a little bit. We'll just mix it in there. The brighter your highlight, the less of it you'll need also. But that's just my own personal rule of thumb. 
it works for me maybe it will work for you and as I see it I'll you know I'll show you with examples hopefully I thin it out here like that all right all right uh, <coughs> <coughs> what I'm gonna do since I'm just here painting and having a little fun Let me show you something. See this palette knife? All right. See this curved fellow right here? Let's look back down here. Now I do have obviously modeling paste, right? I'll get some of this modeling paste and paint. And just like that. And now watch this. You see what I'm doing? I'm tapping this paint with the modeling paste. Now look at that pattern there. See that pattern? It's right on the knife. See that? that is going to give you a different looking rock texture all right yes i did put paste in the in the light color yeah i used the paste that was left over from the darker blue i just put white in it it still got paste on it yeah so what i'm going to do with this What I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap. It's like a tap drag, okay? And it gives me a different rock texture pattern. All right, and I'm gonna show you here. Um, let's do it from here. Now, this type of pattern is omnidirectional no matter which way you turn your knife. Okay, but we'll, we'll establish a, a pattern with this. All right. All right, here we, here we go. We'll start right from here. And we'll just take it. Now, this is the tap. You you tap and you give it a little pull when you tap. So if you kind of tap, tap along and see this. Now, as I'm tapping this stuff along, as you can see, all right, you get a different look, a different texture. I'm only going to go part way with it up here. I'll kind of put it here and then I'll put some right up in here like this. I'll kind of tap it along. Just like that. This type of, of um, texture, it, it takes a little bit of, of, of paint. All right, I'll turn the brush around. I go this way. I come down like this. And kinda, but it's like a tap and pull. It takes practice. Uh, we'll keep it around this area here. I got the knife at a slight angle. And I'll just kind of tap. And what it's doing as I'm tapping like this, just like that, what, what, what it's doing, okay, even though I'm tapping, the texture that I've created with the darker blue is pulling this paint off. You understand? Okay. And we'll do one right here. We'll just kind of give it a tap in, just like that. We'll kinda, I'm only going to go part way, just maybe the upper part of the mountain or the cliff and we'll do this all right I went a little too far probably here but it's okay it's okay I can kind of tap and create a little friend there for him okay let's go here uh, we'll kind of put it in here a little bit like that wrap around at its edge here Get a little bit of that texture right there on that part and kind of and i'm tapping believe it or not i'm still tapping okay just like that now this is your mountain you are the mountain god you tell your palette knife where to go how far to go okay 
You are the both. You are the mountain god. You control the mountain. You build the mountain. You follow me? I like. Okay. We're going to continue that on the other side. Okay. You gather your paint. Vegetable glycerin also, it, de it depends on um, the temperature of your room also. There's my little mound of paint, my um, modeling paste in my blue. Thalo blue, still thalo blue. All right, because white added in the modeling paste. All right, we'll continue the love over here. Just tap. And remember, you got texture on here already. I'm just tapping away. Don't force it. Don't force it. It'll take what it wants. It gives you the rest. Like the IRS. Okay. So. Tap, tap and drag. A little tap and drag. It's like that. Remember, it leaves a texture on your palette knife. See? Okay. We'll come here and add a little love right in there. Um, pop a little bit of love up in here. Tap, tap, tap. Like that. People will not believe that you just use one color in white. So, mountain needs a cave. There's a cave right over there. But we'll see as we, as we move along with it. in here like that come around come around there like that and we'll add a little curve right in here just like this and curve it around curve it around curve it around I have it meet and then we'll do one more because I don't have any more left I don't think see if I can get with it with this can we get away with this tap all right very good that's cool Okay. Let's put this away. Let's go back to this guy. Yes, Keely. I would recommend it actually. Practice on um uh, I mean you can get a bike canvas pad and do all the practicing you want actually okay now as you see I'm not using modeling paste my paint really is thick enough I don't really need the modeling paste so it's just a little bit of white the rest of my phthalo blue so we're gonna and as you see it's not as bright okay <coughs> still lighter than this stuff but it's not as bright as that because you're different you you we're working with with uh different values of the same color all right follow me okay okay now we're going to do with the palette knife here and I wanted this to kind of appear to go straight down. So we're gonna take it very gently. And remember, you got texture. This is completely dry right now, by the way. Once again, uh, you're working with acrylic paint, which dries ridiculously fast. All right, and I have no medium on here, which is why I'm doing all of this. All right, there's, there's nothing, it's, it's dry. Okay, so I want to kind of a downward angle. And I remember you got pattern, you can see it on the camera, you got patterns here already so this paint is going to be picking up on the, the patterns of the previous paint it's not going to really touch that it's going to touch what's raised above that okay all right enough of uh bill dying to science guy let's get on to this we'll just take it and um very casually very lightly we're gonna go downward go downward look at this look at this look at all that fun Huh? Look at all that coolness. 
the knife is doing the work for you really it's, it's almost like cheating it's so fun just like this go straight down why am i going straight down and it's, it does because of the patterns that remember accidentals all right so the patterns that are already on here is shaping your rock for you okay and of course you know i had a little help with the modeling paste let's leave a gap of dark right there and we'll just kind of i got a phone um it's in the way oh man i forgot about my coffee i'm so busy running my mouth to you guys mm. cold all right let's make a little 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 kind of a little gap right there and we'll turn curve the curve the yeah got that enough curve the knife and we'll come this way and go downward just go downward like, like that oops yeah. just like that and just leave it alone leave it be once you're done you're done okay we're gonna highlight that cave very simple to do because the highlighting of the cave got a rim of paint on it so all I'm doing is just brushing it right across just brush it right across see this and I can go straight down there go your cave buddy Yes, Keely. X, um, yeah. Even this white paint here, which you see, it, it is liquefied. All right, it's not the it's not the tube paint, but it's thicker than craft paint, much thicker, much thicker. I don't use my modeling paste often, um, but this is a great teaching moment to use modeling paste. So hey, why not? I don't think I got enough phthalo blue therefore we use more phthalo blue uh, put the phthalo blue back in the same spot more or less right there now I have to be careful with my paints on the glass palette because obviously I don't have nothing to cover up a glass palette making it we're trying to make it uh, about as dark as I had on the other side more or less kind of sort of more or less so what I'm doing I'm taking a little bit of the brighter paint I separated just to get my value back I think that will do we're about to find out in about three seconds Take it, make a thin swipe across, just like that. I just wipe off my brush out. It's just out of habit. All right, here we go. You're welcome, Jeff. Okay, uh, let's continue the love over on, well, no, we gotta continue more love over here. Yeah, we're gonna continue some more love here. Uh, oh, go where this rock is jutting out here, right in here. Ha ha, yeah, there we are. There we go. There we go. Let's get some more. Now we can play. We can play with different like ledges and, and, and whatnot. Come across just like that. I'll borrow a little bit from there and we'll add it. Actually, I like this rock face to just come out, come, kind of come out and say hi to everybody. Just like that. You will see these um, edges. You'll see, you'll see the textures. You, you'll see all of this all right um, as you get to doing these and becoming better at it okay because everybody got to start somewhere I had to all right there you go now remember you're different you're, de you're dealing with the same color different values so even with your cliff 
you got a left side a right side okay you follow me let's let's round that off like that now what is helping you do this is um the texture you laid down beforehand all right but that's what's assisting you okay let's go back into a little more phthalo blue let's use the rest of this light color we're going to darken that up all right that's cool that should be more than enough for the other side i do believe more or less because we're not adding any other color uh, other colors it's just phthalo blue and white There we go. Well, Jeff, um, I gear my teaching towards people who who aren't that you know experienced in in um, in painting. Um, so you don't have to use ultra complicated things to make a complicated looking painting. All right. Um, and whoever told you that, liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay. All right, let's work on the other side. <clears throat> let's play with um Come on over here. There off like that. And we'll kind of wiggle and kind of play with that and come down like this. If it appears a little dark, have no fear. Let it dry. It dries a shade or two darker than what you see applied. Okay, so once again, have no fear. Hashtag don't panic. I usually uh, don't recommend people to try to follow me because I tend to go a little fast. Um, even though I'm talking and I'm slowing this down, I, I tend to roll on through some of these. Let's add uh, a little curve here. Right here. Come here. Curve, curve, boom. Now, how am I making these marks? I'm not. The paint's doing that for me. The previous paint that I added is doing that for me. Okay. Every time I do this, believe it or not, my camera adjusts the focus. Okay. So I have to touch that focus button a lot. So is light and shadow more of a major role in a monotone painting? Yes, Jeff, definitely. The only colors I am using is right now for this painting is just phthalo blue and white. That is it. That's, that's all. That's all I'm using. Watch this. No, I'm not going to use any more. Uh, well, I'm not going to use. I don't need to, to um, use this color for, for the rocks anymore. But watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it. I'll spread it out like that. Take some more white. More white than the blue. Mix it. Mix it in there. Now look at that color. Definitely the brightest color on there besides be um, absolute white. All right. I'm going to get that even brighter. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll just take just part of that blue. And I'll just put it right here. I want, I'm doing it side by side on purpose to show you. Now look at that color shift. Okay. So now you see the, the difference in color. All right. Okay. I said that's a very thin amount of paint. See that? Very small. Remember when I told you the brighter the highlight, the less of it you need, right? Okay, here we go. You see the 
No, you guys can't see it because it's too, too high up. Okay, so let's aim some of this bright uh, phthalo blue color. To certain parts of the of the mountain you be extremely picky now. Usually the edge, or you do the edge that you bring out the edge. All right, and it doesn't take too much. You're just really highlighting just just the edge a little bit. Come up on the top. Just like that. I don't need much of that to give that effect. Okay. So whatever you want super highlighted, you just graze over. Graze over that area with that, that really highlighted color. All right. Now you can really pick and choose what you want really want to kind of shine all right it's only going to take off what you what it needs it's going to hand you back the rest remember irs tax people pop some of that glow on where it juts out there it's like that I don't have to add it everywhere okay just where I feel that some of that residual light is hitting off the rock all right yeah I tend to go a little fast okay now Jeff wanted his his cave there all right now you see where the opening of the cave is here right here is where the sun the sunlight well you don't know if it's sunlight or moonlight right now but there go that entrance to the cave right in here you don't need a lot to emphasize that entrance but we're gonna make sure just cave is shown there yeah there's your cave jeff all this little cave glory That's what I ought to name the painting, Jeff's Cave. <laughs> All right, we're gonna brighten up some more. The same uh, light blue, we're just gonna add a little more white to it, thin it out, okay. Slight, see, very thin roll of paint. All right. All right. So I got the light kind of hitting over there on that side. I don't necessarily have to have anything over on this side. You, you need to keep it dark, keep it dark, leave it be. Because now you, you're playing with, with, remember light brings things forward, dark brings things back. So you're really playing around with light and shade now. Okay. I'll add a little rim of, a baby rim of light right here. Very light. And I'll, and then I will kind of give it a little little curve right there, and I'll leave it be. Everything else can just remain the way it is. Let's go on the other side. All right, on the other side, we're gonna add some more love, just like that. Come here, just like so. We're gonna bring it around there like that. Uh, let's put some light around it here back here bring it up there like that make sure you, you light up that 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 part of the cliff is going over the going over the falls there let's, let's round him off let's go on the letter C just like that uh, let's pop in a little love right here like that now remember there's texture there so that paints easily coming off of the texture follow me okay oh let's put a little something something right down there I don't necessarily have to go back there with it it's not needed I think I can pretty much leave it alone the way it is right now and uh, I think I'm going to yeah, I am. Okay, we'll use we'll use this. No, maybe not. I may I may use that. 
for the next step. You guys will like this. Okay. Let's use, um, there's a few ways you can, uh, you can do this. Um, I like, I like to do it with a filbert brush. It's, it's just what I'm comfortable with using. All right. I need your help, Anthony, when it's time to do the waterfall. I think I'll call it Thurston's Hollow. Yeah, that sounds like a good name. All right, Thurston's Hollow. Monochrome rainbow. Yeah, that's not happening. Ah, I know what's gonna do. Okay. He lost me when he said rainbow. Okay, let's um deal with the a little bit of we'll deal with a little bit of water. We'll put the water right here. Obviously you don't see water. Let's get some of this paint. And put it right in the water just like that all right you, you're playing a little bit of uh not russian <laughs> roulette but you're, you're playing it's the bravery test okay you're getting more of a watery wash than anything else now white paint white paint tends to leave a chalky film all right so just be mindful of that okay here we go Obviously, waterfall has foam. Yes. Okay. So we'll do a tester. We'll do it, and we'll do it down here. It needs. Believe it or not, I need more. You'd be surprised how much paint you would need and how much how much you know water to get that effect. So we're gonna really put it on here and go again into my water. I'm gonna go on the side here. You need to really have a uh, watery paint to do this, because if you mess up, if this is watery paint, you can just take more water and wipe it off. Okay. Okay. Once again, another tester. Another tester. Yeah, this will work. This will work. Look at this. Watch. I'm going to go right across the falls with it. Why am I doing that? Because it makes a film. And once it's dry, it makes a, f a smoky film. You follow me? Now we're getting mist in your waterfall. Especially down below here. Okay. And that's all I'm doing. But it's making all sorts of crazy patterns and, and striations and everything. And you'll see that as it dries. Okay, you make, a, make a little lines like this. And you just kind of scumble it away. Remember, this is dry. Uh, I'm just scumbling the, the, the mist. And so it's um, wet on dry. When I say wet on dry, obviously I'm meaning wet paint. Whoops, over here. Wet paint on a... On, uh, the dry sur dry surface. But look at look at the patterns. You see you see what's going on there? Okay. You can make it a little heavier here in here. If you want. It's a little, little batch. It's a little bit heavier. It's alright. If you find it getting a little thick, you lighten it up a little more. No big deal. Uh let's kinda get some fog going in there like this around here now it needs just a touch more water just a touch of water I'll just bring it right here loosen it up a little bit all right now remember it appears to be bright right now but you got to give it a chance to dry let the water dry I'll bring this foggy stuff right up right, up, right all this mist goes right up in here it's like that it's all right you just keep it going keep it moving all right come on around in here just like that circular motions now I prefer a fan, um a filbert brush when I do this it's just me okay but as it dries you still see your rocks you still see all sorts of 
things happening here. All right. This is just the first layer of the mist. Okay. So it's just the first first layer, but you see all certain look at that stuff happening and you're not even trying that hard. Okay. You guys are getting spoiled today. Let's get a little brighter, a little more white. Just be careful. The brighter you go, just just be careful. You need a, a more of a finer touch. Just be careful with it. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go up in here a little bit like this. Now, what I'm doing? Check this out. Now, what I'm doing as I'm doing this. You, all right, is that I'm moving this around rather quickly, rather briskly as I'm doing this. Remember, it's wet on dry. And you really want that misty quality. It's like you really want to kind of scumble all of that in there. I'm using only the bare tip of the... I'm using the tip of the brush. It's got the paint on it, but the bottom, the side of the brush is what's pushing it in there. So I can take this, right? I can save it from right, right here. All right, I'll get it a little brighter just to show you. Watch what I'm gonna do. I can take this and go right across the falls with it. Go right across the falls with this, this stuff. See that? Come out here, but I'm going right across the falls. And you can get it a little brighter to go across the falls. It's all right. Come, go right across the falls with that guy. And I'm just scumbling more mist. Just like that. Go right across the falls with him. I'm getting a little more just pure white this time. I've been doing this for a while, so I kind of know what I'm working with, what I can do, what I can't do. Okay. So I'm going across two points in the falls with this mist. All right, I'll go back to this with the, and now I can start to highlight little little spots in there. I'm just scumbling little areas, just like that. Where the uh, mist is hitting down below where the rocks are. Okay, add a little love in there like that. Up to you, but put it right in there down below. I'm gonna add a little bit of water with that white pure white okay get a little bit of water with that pure white now remember if you feel you're going a little too crazy with it you can always get rid of some of that he's real cloudy looking all right see real cloudy it's all right like I say, it's a bravery test for some. We're gonna take some of that nice cloudiness and we're going right across that cave with it. Look at that. Bring it down here a little. You're actually adding more depth to your painting doing crazy stuff like this. Have it disappear. All right, remember this stuff dries. When it dries, it sets in. You'll still be able to see some some uh, some stuff happening there. Is that the same teeth? Same yes, same thing. Same way for making smoke. It's basically the same thing. All right, smoke is a little thicker than your than your fog. Because when this dries, you'll still see see your details and and all of that. So it's really up to you. Smoke, mist, fog, same technique. Smoke, mist, fog. Think with smoke. Smoke is heavier. All right, you're not gonna see really too much stuff once you got smoke involved. All right, all right. Okay, if you think we're done, we're not. We're almost there, but here we're not done yet. Let me tap on this thing and see how long I've been on. All right, that's pretty cool, about, about 90 minutes, a little over 90 minutes, that's not bad. All right, so we got all this happening. We've got uh, distant trees, we got the circular clouds, we got uh, Thirsting's uh, Hollow, we got the waterfall, 
we got the mist. Um, I want to put a, a uh, I'm going to put a tree in here. Let's put a tree in there. <coughs> Different type of tree. Now we know the Bob Ross tree, you know, he took the, um, thank you, uh, Jessica. Oh, what you see is the keyboards and stuff back there. Yeah. Um, uh, everybody familiar with the, the Bob Ross tree, you know, you do one, um, not today. I, I affectionately <laughs> call these the Willie trees. My instructor, Wilson Bickford, um, he does these type of trees. You're more than welcome, Jeff. All you got to do is um, press the subscribe button. Um, I am on Facebook, same name, Grayscale Painting. Um, usually when I'm finished with these, I take a picture of it, then I furnish it, and then, you know, that's that. Okay, this is a one inch uh, wood trim brush, window trim brush. I gave it a crew cut. All right. Now, this method of tree does take quite a bit of paint. I just dropped something. I don't know what I dropped. I mean, it was a paint, tube of paint, but I just don't know what color. It don't matter. All right, let's use some more of this. This is like the last vestiges of, of phthalo blue. I got another tube of this stuff. Okay. I hope to goodness gracious that's enough. But we'll see. All right. We're going to put a tree in here. I'm not going to put a tree to cover uh, Thurston's uh, cave. But the size of the tree, what we're going to do for the tree. All right. We'll set everything back. You follow me? Now... The darkest thing on here, obviously, is black. All right. Um, but the dark, the, the deepest blue will be the tree. Okay. This uh, method of, of making a pine tree is different. Um, like I said, I call them the Willie Trees. The instructor that I got certified under does these. And this is not enough thalo blue, I can tell. This is not enough. But we'll, we'll use what I can. That's not enough. Who am I kidding? Hold on one second. This method does take, it requires a lot of paint. But then again, he's, he's an oil painter. And I had, when I took my certification, I'd take it using oil paint. So, um, yeah, so I should know better. But I'm going to show you a little trick with this if you want to try these type of trees, okay? If you see, I'm tapping the color into these bristles, okay? Packed on there quite nicely. Let me show you on here, actually. Once you put it in there, don't mash. You just touch. See that pattern? That's all you need. All right. This is why you need plenty of paint. All right. We're going to put Mr. Tree right in here. How tall? You don't even have to have a tall tree. Anything above a certain size, we'll throw all of this further back because now it's dark. A pine tree, not a dead tree, no no dead tree today. No, this one's gonna have a little life to it. No, no dead tree. I did dead um, this morning. The black and white version of something like this, I did, I did, I didn't do a dead tree, I did two um, birch trees. All right, let's put the tree Oh, right around, right around here. So I'm going to just give it a nice little touch. Boom, just like that. Now you guys see that. Well, what I'm going to do is take this paint very gently and I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to the right. I'm going to the left. I'm going to the right. It makes a different type of pine tree. Going to the left. Go to the right. Okay. Left. Right. Left. It gets wider as we go down the right, and I, I straighten my brush as I do this, just like that. Okay, 
that fella pushes everything backwards because he's right in front. Y you follow me? He's right there. Okay. There he is. All right. So he does not need to be above the mountain. He just got to be in front of the mountain. Okay. All right. Let's take a little bit of white. Boom. Put it right there. Yeah, let's get some more white. Boom. Put it right there. You got plenty of paint on that brush. I'm getting water. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. I'll repeat that one more time. A thin paint. Thin sticks to a thick paint now got some thin paint on here be careful don't 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 this is not the scene from you know the shining or anything like that you gotta be very gentle okay all right very gentle touch watch very boom we're very gentle Go to the left, go to the right. Don't get rid of all of your darks. And I'm coming back around in this side. Coming around in here. Now, if you did this tree, type of tree, and you went a little heavy, you can always bring it back. So don't worry about that. Just like that. Come on down here like that. Okay, now makes a little, little tough to see. No problem. More white. Put it right in there. Just make it brighter. And whatever side you want your highlights, that's the side you put. Just be be mindful of where you are with it. sides and you travel inside a little bit just to show a little roundness to that guy just like that now you see the tree see that don't get rid of all of your darks okay take my palette knife I don't normally do this but with a tree this size you can kind of get away with it give him a little trunk there and particularly toward the top give him, leave him a trunk there if it's if it's too if it's not light enough I'll just take it spread out Give him a little, little bit of a, especially toward the top there. You can kind of give him a little, little love up in the top there for a trunk. Just looking at it. Just looking at it a little bit more. Uh, gonna make him a little brighter because I want him to stand out bring some of that brightness in there that's all you can cheat and bring some on the other side but mainly it's the left hand side you want some of that light going there just like that I say I'll put a few bits on the other side I can return some of that dark in there to get some separation. So it's, right now it's just me being picky, picking and choosing where I want some of the dark spots to hit. So I'll go into my thalo blue, nothing but thalo blue, it's the darkest batch. And I kind of return some of that dark in there. See this? You bring some of that dark back in certain spots, particularly down toward the bottom there. So you can return your tree shape back. Yeah, we're good like that. All right. See, you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
All right, guys. I think we, we we've about done it. Let me um pan back. This is also one of these paintings where I do not. Um, I usually have a border on my paintings. This one, I have no border. This is just you know corner to corner, just the whole thing. Uh, let me put my name on it real fast. Just about, Jeff, yes. Oh, I'll sign it right here. Bear with me one second while I put this signature on here real quick. I do thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. There. All right, let's... Um, back actually let me get rid of something all right there I think we'll center it right about here Yep, that should pretty much center it for everybody. Now, I'll put the focus on it there. All right. Whew. Well, there you go, guys. I'll take a picture of it because I know there's glare and, and, and the light glare and all of that. I can, I can shut this down. Uh, and um, I'll take a picture of this. Thank you, Keely. I appreciate it. Um, normally, I am on here um, live every Wednesday. I may not be live next Wednesday. Um, I'll let you guys know. I may have to go somewhere um, with this Wednesday coming. Um, but I'm usually live Wednesday, and um, I, I on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube, so. Um, I have a pre-recorded one for tom tomorrow, um, and they're at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm here usually at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays, um, Eastern Standard Time, all right, usually, so. Marilyn, you're welcome. Jeff, Thurston's Hollow, you're welcome. I don't remember ever meeting you, so thank you very much um, for stopping by. And yes, these paintings are available uh, for purchase. If you have Facebook, um, you can contact me on Facebook Messenger. Um, or you just email me, I think, in the community tab somewhere. It's my email address. Um, so... All phthalo blue and white, that's it. Monochromatic um, painting, all one color. So, I appreciate it, guys. It's time for me to take out the beast, let him go for his walk, and warm up my very cold coffee. And I shall see you guys when I, I shall see you guys when I see you. I gotta uh, learn to look at the camera and not the tablet. But I do appreciate you. And I will see you when I see you. You guys be safe. Take care. All right. And peace.